Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. I haven't filmed a favorites video in a couple of months. I mean, I filmed new makeup and I've talked about some new luxury favorites, but I haven't done a monthly favorites since March. So I actually have a lot of things to talk about. This might be a long one, so let's get right into it. I've got makeup, skincare, and a couple of products that actually didn't work out for me, unfortunately. So let's start with makeup. If you watched my last video, you saw that I was able to test out a few new luxury makeup pieces and this should come as no surprise to you, I fell in love with La Bouche Rouge. So Violet Grey sent over a couple of things for me to try. They have a refillable system, so you get the like lipstick refill with the leather lipstick case. It's really beautiful. And then you get the eyeshadow palette that comes with the case, as well as a magnetic compact. So I really enjoy the eyeshadow, and I think it's really well priced for a luxury eyeshadow, especially if you just get the refill, which you could just do that you don't necessarily need the compact they are sold separately but the formula is just so smooth it's really high quality pigments they require very little blending and they're a satiny silky finish and I think it's a formula that's flattering for people of all ages because this silky soft sheen just looks great on everyone so I am really impressed with this and I do really enjoy the luxury experience the product I fell absolutely in love with and that I've been reaching for a ton is their lipstick. And I got their satin lipstick in the shade Nude Brown. I'm wearing it right now. You can see it has sort of this like caramely undertone, but there's also a bit of peachiness, like a bit of oranginess and a bit of brightness to it. And on my skin tone, it just really pops. And the formula is so thin, very comfortable, but it feels like nothing on the lips. It still lasts a long time though. So I don't know how they do it. I'm gonna retouch right now. And uh, yeah, it's just really, really comfortable on the lips. It's also nice that it's not too, too pigmented. It's not full pigment right out the gates. So you're able to build up the pigment or it kind of starts out almost as like a tinted, tinted balm with a little bit more tint, but it's not super, super opaque. So I feel like it's very daytime appropriate and it looks good even if you don't have a full face of makeup on. I'm just realizing this list is going to have a lot of lip products. I've just tried a lot of lip products in the last couple of months. I also mentioned this in my Violet Grey video, the Ami Cole Lip Treatment Oil. It's so luscious. It's a thicker formula and I know that sounds maybe off-putting, but it actually creates the most beautiful mask over your lips and it's deeply moisturizing and because it has a grippier finish, it actually sticks around on the lips versus more thin oil that kind of slides around. It doesn't do any of that and I've really enjoyed it even just for its hydrating properties alone. So this is the shade Bliss. I really like it. It's a beautiful, easy, like my lips sort of shade, but they have a richer berry tone shade that I'm definitely curious to try. It smooths over lip lines. It makes your lips look really plush and beautiful and it's really comfortable. And if you watched my Make Beauty lipstick video, you'll know that I'm a big fan of these. These are full pigment. They're a creamy lipstick. They're also satiny. They're a little bit thicker in um, formula than the La Bouche Rouge La Bouche Rouge lipsticks, but I really enjoy these. I love the Slim Bullet. They're also refillable, and specifically, I love these two shades. So I've really been loving Infrared, which is the most gorgeous orangey red. It's perfect for summer. And I've been loving the shade Equilibrium, which is more of your, like, I don't know, peachy, beigey rose. So I've got my nude lip and my bright lip in this range and I love them both. I think they're super flattering and they're long lasting. They're easy to reapply. I also did lip swatch every single, every single lipstick in this range. So if you're curious to see other shades, including some of the other shades that I liked, you can check out that review and I'll link it below. And I do have a discount code for Make Beauty, it's Becca15. So recently, Rare Beauty sent over a couple of things from the line that I hadn't tried yet, and I really am enjoying these. I also went to a Rare Beauty AAPI event. That was really great. It was a nice experience. We had like a floral arrangement class, and it was nice because it was a brand event that wasn't about the products. It really was about talking to the people at your table and having this interactive experience. It was really cute. They made a point of inviting a really diverse group of AAPI creators, and it was just a really nice experience. So I think maybe I got these in the goodie bag or maybe I got them in the mail. 
Either way. And the first is the Rare Beauty uh, Bronzer, their bronzer stick. And this is one of their newer shades called Happy Soul. I know when they first released these, they were really, really warm toned. And I didn't try the initial release, but this is one of their shade extension shades, I think. And it's described as like a light, medium, cool tone, I think. It's, or neutral anyway. It's a great shade for me. It's a golden undertone, but it's not orangey. I would say it blends out more golden neutral on me, which is what I look for in a bronzer. I don't like a bronzer that's too peachy or too warm. So I did wear it today. And the thing is, this formula is really, really thin. Even though it's a cream bronzer, it goes on in such a thin, even way, and it blends out really evenly. Unlike other cream bronzers, like for example, the Milk Makeup Cream Bronzer, or some of the other ones I like, the Westman Atelier Contour, those have a bit more body to them, or maybe even a bit more stiffness. This one is thin, and it almost seems to like glide. It has a lot of glide to it. It blends out really easily. You can apply it directly to your face. It's not like too much pigment is going to deposit because it goes on in such a sheer layer. So I really, really enjoy that. And I think Happy Soul is a really, really nice match for me. I've even used this on the eyes and it's nice for that too. Then Rare Beauty sent me one of their newer blush shades. Um, they extended the line with two new shades and they sent me the shade Worth, which is like a neutral rosy shade. I'm wearing it on the cheeks today. I have had an interesting journey with this blush formula because I got it when they first released it and I didn't pick up a shade that I loved and I picked it up in the matte formula. I think it was called, shoot, I can't remember now. It was like a bright red like a true fire engine red. And it just wasn't the shade for me. It wasn't super flattering. So this is my first time retrying the formula and also trying the dewy version. And I find that the dewy version blends a bit more easily, I think because it has that dewiness in the formula. And also this shade is super, super flattering. It has this beigey rose undertone that makes it blend into the skin really seamlessly. Like it's hard to tell where it stops and ends. And I've also learned that with these, I like to apply to the back of my hand and then pick it up with a brush and then stipple onto the cheeks. And I feel like that's really key for getting an even and not overly pigmented application. So the shade Worth is really beautiful. I know they just released another one that's like a burnt peach that I really wanna try. So that's on my wish list, but really enjoying this. Let's talk about a cream eyeshadow I've been loving. I tried the Victoria Beckham Beauty Eyewear the Stick Eyeshadows, and I did swatch all of the shades for you. And I had a bit of a learning curve with these. I mean, really my love and what I'm picking is very shade specific. So I am have been loving the shade Macaron. I think it's just such a fun shade for spring and summer. And you can see the swatch there. It has a lot of white in it, and I find that, and this is something I had to learn, once you apply it, you can blend it out, and then you have to wait for it to set down. But once it sets down, it becomes very, very budge proof. I even wore it like in the rain at a music festival and it stayed on. So I was really, really impressed by that. I've also really enjoyed the yellow shade, which is this bright like sunflower yellow. I will say I don't think I've loved the shimmer shades as much. And it might just be because I'm gravitating towards color right now. But I, there is one shade that I didn't try that I think I'll enjoy more that's more of like a bronzy shade. I think the shades I've tried right Right now are maybe just a little bit too cool toned and ashy for my preferences for warm weather. So I'm willing to keep testing them and see how they go. I also find that the glitter particles in them are a little bit chunkier than I would like. But regardless, um, my love for this eyeshadow is very strong. And every time I've worn it, I've gotten a lot of compliments. And I think pastel eyes can be difficult to pull off. Sometimes it's a multi-step process, but this makes it one easy process where I don't have to like take a white primer and then powder it and then put a color on. This is sort of an all-in-one lavender eye look and it makes it really easy. All right, let's talk lashes. I have been having some fun with my eyelashes and one of the ways that I've been having fun is what I'm wearing now, which is a rosy brown mascara. It might not 
come through on camera as much, but I think, um, I mean, you guys saw me use this actually in my new beauty or new makeup try on. It's the Lily by Red um, Color Cara in the shade Rosy Brown, and this is a K-Beauty mascara. It's very affordable. I actually want to pick this up in a couple of other browns as well as the black because the formula is lengthening, it's volumizing, and it holds a curl like nothing else. <laughs> like these will stay up all day long. And the nice thing about about the shade Rosy Cara, or no, Rosy Brown, and it's the color Cara, is that it brings out the warm tones in brown eyes. So I find that especially in natural light or in sunlight, in softer light, it just adds a bit of something without being so over the top or even being as dramatic as an eyeshadow. But the rosy brown kind of lifts the tones of the skin and of the eyes, the hair, all of that without being too, too obvious. And it also softens the eye area in a way that black mascara doesn't. Black mascara adds a bit of drama, whereas brown or rosy toned mascaras add a bit of warmth. So I think it's just a nice like subtle touch. The other things I've been enjoying are some false lashes, which is very not like me. However, I am doing my friend's makeup for her wedding and I've been trying out a couple of different very, very natural wispy lashes. And I just really wanna show you these. So I actually purchased these, but this is the brand Love Scene. They sent me these when they first launched and I liked them so much that I actually repurchased them, which I've never done with false lashes. I mean, I wear false lashes like maybe once a year. It's not really my thing, but I really like these. Let me show you the styles I got. I have two that are on the more natural side. So the first ones are called Luca and they look like this. So these are very, very subtle. They have a clear band and they're actually black and brown and they're really not too long. They just give you a really wispy, feathery lash. They're really beautiful on the eyes and I think if you have short lashes or you're not comfortable wearing false lashes, these are really nice because they feel almost weightless. Especially with the clear band, you don't need to have a lot of eyeliner on to mask the band. It's just a really flattering, easy lash to wear. The other ones I got are called Jack and these are a fully black lash and they do have more of a band you can see here. So they're a little bit more dramatic, but they're still really soft and wispy. And both of these are shorter in the inner corner and longer in the outer corner. So they kind of elongate the eye. The other thing I like about these is that the band itself isn't too long. I find with a lot of um, traditional like false lashes, I have to trim them so much for my eye shape, but these are really not too long. And so I can wear these right out of the package, which is not true for most lashes for me. So this one's slightly more dramatic because it does have that band and they have more of like a crisscross quality to them. But both of these are really, really stunning. I think they make really high quality lashes. You can definitely wear them over and over if you take good care of them. And especially if you're like me and you only wear them once in a while or to a special event or photo shoot or something, and maybe you have sensitive eyes, I think these are a really, really solid option. On to some products that I have some mixed feelings about. One product I mostly really like is the Rare Beauty uh, Tinted Lip Oil. I have the shade Joy. However, I will say it's not what I expected. So this is kind of more like a K-Beauty lip stain in that it's very pigmented, much more pigmented than I was expecting, and it does stain the lips. It goes on initially as a gel, but once that gel, initial gel feeling sets down, it's not a gloss and it's not oily over time. It just fades into a stain. So I was surprised by that because I was expecting something like the Ami Cole lip oil, which is more of that rich like lip treatment feeling. This is not that and it also has a bit of menthol in it. I don't really like menthol in my lip products. I find it to be drying over time. It doesn't do the thing that I want it to do. However, it's subtle and it does fade relatively quickly. Like once the product sets down, that mintiness is gone. It doesn't tingle a lot. So I just wanted to mention that because I do really like this shade. It's called a muted peach, but it's really not. It's like very bright corally peach, at least on me. But I do really enjoy it. I like the color. I think it's fun for summer and I'd be curious to try some of the more nude shades in the line. But just wanted to share that like quick review because it wasn't what it appeared to be, but I still like it. Then I have a product that has 
puzzles me. So this is the Merit Shade Slick Gelée Tinted Lip Oil in the shade Jeté. I think they only released like three shades of this maybe, and it makes sense because it's very, very sheer. So it's the shade Slick Formula, which I really like. I like, I have and love almost all of the original tints, tinted shades. These are much more sheer and they're just kind of like a clear jelly with a bit of tint. And Jeté, I mean, I'm gonna swatch it for you. You're not even gonna see it. Do you know what I mean? Like you don't need more than one shade, I'll say that. However, if you layer it on, it does have that like pH color changing quality that on my lips turns into a brighter pink, not like a hot pink, but a brighter pink. The thing that's confused me about this is that it is hydrating. It's not gonna give you long-term hydration, but it adds just a nice hydrating layer. Mine has changed in color and I'm a little bit confused by that. I hope you can see it. Let me try to focus on this. So at the bottom, it's a little bit more of a neutral pink. And then at the top, it's turned hotter pink. And I don't know if it's because that's where the applicator goes in and out and it like whatever oils are on my lips get transferred into the formula and maybe it activates the pH color changing quality. But my actual tube has like an ombre quality to it. And it was much more noticeable when I first started using it. Now it's all kind of turning a little bit pinker, which I think is fine. I don't think it means like the color is changing or the formula is going off or anything. It's all like looking the same on my lips. It's not a product I've been reaching for a ton. I'll say that pH color shifting things are not my favorite personally, but I, I do like the formula. I think I would just reach, I have reached for the original shade slick oils a little bit more, especially the shades um, Marrakesh, I really love that one, and Taupe as well. And finally, I have an update on a product that I had really high hopes for, but it just isn't working out for me. And that is the Cali Ray Clean Mascara come hell or high water mascara. So this is a tubing mascara. I've heard from people that have bought multiple tubes of this, like Sandra, that their first tube was better than their second tube. So I don't know if there's been a reformulation, but I originally tried this about six months ago and I found it to be really, really wet and it dropped a curl like instantly. And it's not a very buildable formula because it's so wet. And it, I was bummed because it's a tubing mascara. I really like tubing formulas. So I put it aside for several months, like several months. I haven't touched it. And I was hoping that the formula would dry out and get better over time. And I've used it a few times, like three months later and four months later and just last week I finally tried it and I was like, I think I have to give up on it because it's not drying out. It's not getting any less wet and it drops a curl and I don't find the applicator that great for moving the product through my lashes. It's a brush applicator, but it's a rather thin wand. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. It's a pretty thin wand without a lot of definition between the bristles. So I, it's just not, for me. So I'm sad to say that because I know a lot of people like this and had high hopes for this, myself included, but it just wasn't for me. So that is it for makeup. Um, I did just place a Sephora order with the new Dior Backstage Blush. Three of the Makeup by Mario new like veil cream blushes because I love that bronzer formula. At first I only ordered one shade and then I didn't think it would show up because I got the shade barely there or barely blush or something. So I ordered two more. So I'll swatch those for you. We'll have a full review try on all of that. And I also picked up a Tom Ford quad in the shade Hazy Sensuality, which I'm really excited about. I love the wet dry formula. I only have it in this shade or the color story Honeymoon, which I've used up twice but I really liked the iridescent champagne-y pinks in this color story, so I'll be reviewing those soon. I've also got my eye on the Natasha Denona Yucca palette, which looks amazing. It has these murky mustards and greens and interesting metallics, so I think I'm gonna be picking that up too. So I've got a lot of stuff coming up in the pipeline, but that's it for makeup. Let's move on to skincare. Let's go generally in order of application. I have fallen in love with the Naturium Fermented Camellia creamy cleansing oil. This texture is so lovely and it's probably the most similar to the Jordan Samuel Skin After Show Treatment Cleanser, which is also a gel oil in a tube. So let me just show you this texture. It's so lovely. This is clear. 
and it has this trans like transparency to it. I love that I'm actually able to like really spread it out on the skin. It's not a balm, but it spreads out like a balm where it melts onto the skin and it breaks down makeup, breaks down SPF so efficiently. I'm able to kind of leave it on the skin if I want to like brush my teeth or something, really let it work into the skin. And it rinses and emulsifies clean. It doesn't leave a film on the skin. So if you like the Jordan Samuel After Show Treatment Cleanser, I think you'll really love this. And I just love a cleansing balm or a cleansing oil in a tube. I just find that it's really easy to use, it's satisfying, and there aren't that many that come in tubes. There's this, the Jordan Samuel, and the Paula's Choice. So if you want a cleansing balm in a tube, like a traditional balm, that's what I would go for. But I also love this because it has a flip top. It's just really easy to grab and go by the side of your sink. It's super, super effective. And I do have an Aturium um, discount code. I think it works anytime, it's Becca15. Speaking of cleansing, I have such a like dumb little thing, but it's a game changer. And it's these little wristbands that I put on when cleansing because I get so much water that runs down my arms, it gets my sleeves wet. It's such an annoyance, especially like in the morning if I'm running around rushing or something like that. I just ordered a huge bundle of these and it's changed my quality of life so much. I know it sounds so ridiculous. You could use scrunchies, you could even take old towels and like rip them into shreds and put them around your wrists, but just not being totally wet when I'm cleansing is such a nice experience, especially when you're double cleansing, you have double the water, and um, it has changed the quality of my life. So I really enjoy these, and I think if you are a skincare aficionado, you'll like these too. For pigmentation, I'm someone who doesn't break out often, although in the last couple weeks I've been breaking out a lot, I think because I'm stressed. When I do get breakouts, they leave behind a lot of pigmentation, especially along my jawline, like right here, for example. So I've been reaching for the Pharmacy Brighten Up 3% TXA toner a ton. It's um, a fluid, watery toner, but it contains tranexamic acid, which helps break down pigmentation, especially when you go, when you're using this like right after a break breakout, I think it helps prevent it getting too dark. Because the darker it gets, the longer it takes to fade, you know? And so I've really found this very useful. It's also not too irritating. It doesn't break down my skin barrier. It just adds a little bit of hydration and the tranexamic acid. So I use this um, either in the morning or in the evening. Just make sure you're using SPF with this. Speaking of breakouts, I have a new patch that I've really been enjoying, a pimple patch. It's the Innisfree Retinol Sika Focusing Patch. So these are little micro dot patches. I'll show you what they look like and they're really cute. And I like these because I find that they really settle down a, a blemish over time, like overnight. Especially, for example, um, cystic spots that don't necessarily come to a white head. So this one was one of them. So they come and they look like this. They're super cute. They're little clover shapes, like four leaf clovers. And they have the little darts on the back. It's not painful at all. It just helps deliver the ingredients to your skin. These aren't going to be as absorbent, for example, with white heads as some of the other pimple patches. So for example, my favorite pimple patch for sucking up gunk is the Hero Cosmetic Patches, and I actually just repurchased those. These are better for bringing down inflammation or cystic spots, and I find that they deliver that like concentrated ingredient overnight, and it almost like melts into the skin. So I found that using these with an angry, inflamed, red cystic spot helped shorten the lifespan of that spot. So um, yeah, they're, they're a little bit more potent and pack more of a punch than your typical acne patches, but they're, they're really good for those stubborn spots. Then I've got a couple of products from a new newer brand to me, and they're, they're called Experiment Beauty or Experiment Skin. So they're super fun. Look how cute the branding of their products are. So I've tried two products that have both instantly made it into my regular routine. So the first one is called Super Saturated, and this is their version of a hydrating serum. It has 30% glycerin. I just love the packaging. This is also refillable, so you can buy refills and just 
take the pump and put it into the next bottle. I think they might be sold out, but they're restocking soon if you do see this. This is such an interesting texture. So it's kind of goopy and I didn't know if I would like it because I think you can see it's like, it's thick and it's kind of like stringy. If you've used the Cosrx like snail mucin, it has that feeling to it, but it doesn't include snail mucin. However, this makes for super plumped up, juicy, dewy skin like no other. And it sets down and it becomes a little bit grippy as it's setting down. And I find it actually makes a really, really good makeup primer, but it doesn't, it plays nicely with other products in my routine. So I can go in with my moisturizer and SPF after, and it won't pill or anything. It, if anything, I actually find it like that anything I put on my skin after it, it's kind of drawing it into the skin because of that texture. So it's really innovative. I haven't felt another serum really like this. Just hard to say in a very saturated skincare space, but um, really enjoying this. Their other product is also very unique and this is their buffer jelly. So this is meant for slugging basically, but they call it their barrier boosting oil gel. And this texture is incredible. So it's almost like an oil gel serum. Okay. So that is one drop. It almost looks like an oil and it does feel like an oil, but it, it's more spreadable. It's almost like an oily serum and you can use this over your moisturizer, under your moisturizer. I actually like it under or over, either way. I find that it plays nicely with others. And even though I have oily combo skin, if I feel like my skin barrier needs some extra boosting, or if I'm in really cold or really hot weather where I need that extra moisture to be locked into my skin, this is a really nice alternative to a classic oil. I also think, I mean, I think the textures in general are what make this brand stand out because they're so fun. They're skin entertainment, but they're also really, really effective at what they do. So can't say enough good things about this. I've also heard a lot of creators with a lot of different skin types say they enjoy this. So if a traditional oil feels too heavy for you, I think it's worth a shot because this has that nice spreadability of a serum. A product I picked up in Korea, but it is available in the US and I'll link it below, is the Bring Green Artemis Calming Repair Cream. It says 54% artemisia extract, which is mugwort. If you've never tried it, it has a very calming, soothing uh, effect on the skin. And I find it really brings down redness, heat, inflammation, rosacea, any of that. I have had, like I mentioned, a lot of breakouts recently. I also had an allergic reaction to a food I ate earlier this week. And I just used cortisone and this and I found that it really, really helped. So this is interesting because it's a very stiff cream. So it comes out looking like that and it almost, I don't know, it's thick, but it doesn't have a greasy touch to it. It spreads out really nicely and it's a really good barrier cream. So if you're using actives or you need a night cream, it has richness, it calms the skin, but it's not greasy. It doesn't make me feel like my pores are getting clogged, but it still holds in moisture. And then it kind of sets down to a sort of velvety finish, which I find to be really nice. And I've even used this during the day under makeup and it works nicely that way too. And it has that green herbaceous smell that comes from artemisia extract. I really love it. I find it super refreshing and calming, both like for the senses and also for my skin. So I've been slowly getting around to testing all of the SPFs that I picked up when I was in Seoul uh, last month. And one of the ones that I've been really enjoying is from Goodall. It's their Heartleaf Calming Moisture Sun Cream, SPF 50 PA4 pluses. And this is all chemical, inorganic SPFs. It's really lovely. This is what it looks like. It comes out like in a little squeezy tube. It's creamy, but it has no white cast. It sinks into the skin really nicely, preps the skin for makeup, has a really nice finish if you're not wearing makeup. And again, it's totally sheer and it is on the more moisturizing side. So when I use this one, in the mornings, I can skip SPF, so I'll do like vitamin C, a little bit of eye cream, and then this one, and it's that's it. It's like a one and done step for the daytime, or if you have drier skin, it's a nice hydrating layer over your other skincare. So I wanted to share that because it has a really elegant finish, 
and I'm really glad I picked it up. And I also love this shade of green. If you can't tell, I'm matching it, which doesn't have anything to do with the formula, but it does deliver on formula as well. Smidge says hi. She wanted to come in. Hi, I love you. I love you. The last thing I wanna mention is a hat, and it's a sun hat. Obviously, summer's warming up, even though it's really cold and gray here today, we've had kind of a weird week. Gray May, I guess. But I've gotten a lot of use. I've pulled my favorite sun hat out again. This is from, um, it's called Wallaby Hat Company. This is the style Montecito. So you've got the um, pinched front of the hat, and then you have a really wide brim. The thing I also love is it has an adjustable strap so you can secure it to your head. And I've worn this even on windy days and it actually does stay on my head. And it's UPF 50 and I also think it's really cute. I wear this to the pool, I wear it to the beach, I wear it when I'm gardening in the yard and I just find it's actually cute. I'm excited to wear it, I wear it all the time and I also find that because it's so flexible, it's easy to travel with if necessary to stick it in like a tote bag or something and you can always steam out the wrinkles. And I've had this one for like three, maybe going on four years and it has a bit of wear and tear, but honestly, not really. Like there's a little bit of a stray thread here, but for how much I've worn it, it doesn't have much wear and tear at all. Did I say Wallaby? It's called Wallaroo Hat Company. I don't remember what I said. They make a bunch of other styles and models as well. I will say it's, it's a woven hat, so it's not gonna be as protective as a solid fabric hat where you get no sun peeking through, but it's a very, very tight weave and I don't even notice like patches of sun coming through the skin. And to me, consistency is the most important thing when it comes to sun protection. And I'm much more likely to be consistent if I feel like a hat is cute and I like wearing it. And I love wearing this one. So I think I have shared it on here before, but I wanted to mention it because I'm sure we've all got sun protection on the brain as we're planning summer activities and being outside and going on vacations and fun things like that. So that is it for me. I have a bunch of things I could keep mentioning, but these are the things that have really stuck out to me over the last couple of months. Things I've reached for again and again beyond just like the new release window and that's when I can tell I really like a product is when I'm reaching for it continually, even after the new shine of a product has worn off. And of course, not all of these are new products, they're repeat products as well. So I would love to know what you've been enjoying the last couple of months, if there's anything you'd like me to try out, anything you think I would love. I will list everything with links, of course, below, as well as discount codes, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.